It's been a bit since I've done an iPad on camera, so today I have Apple's ninth generation tablet, and not much has changed in terms of repair since the first generation iPad Air, and the iPad 5, 6, 7, or 8. Internally, it's almost all the same. This one has some gorgeous spiderweb cracks stemming from just right of the home button, meaning this will be a risky one. Let's get this over to the heating mat. Another thing that hasn't changed is the thick, angry adhesive used to hold these digitizers in place. A straight razor can cut through the softened adhesive pretty easily. Just be careful not to go too deep and slice the LCD open. That's just more work. Along the right side of the glass are the digitizer and home button ribbons. To be safe, you can actually skip cutting the entire right side. It'll peel up easily with the other three sides split open. You might be saying, Chris, that glass looks way worse than it did before. And you're right. Sometimes things happen. We just keep going. There are four Phillips screws at each corner of the LCD panel. These help to prevent the LCD from falling out, which historically has never actually occurred. Each mounting corner is also held securely in place with black silicone. This is to ensure that the LCD shatters when inexperienced people try to pull it up after removing the screws. Thanks, Apple. Next up, disconnecting the battery is pretty important. The guitar pick from iFixit will interrupt the connection, making it safe to work on. Three short small Phillips screws hold the digitizer and LCD shield in place. These are like the battery screw, but shorter. Each of these pops off like a Lego. Each generation of iPad uses two digitizer connections, but they rotate the orientation every so often, just to make sure that the parts aren't all backwards compatible like the iPad Air and 5 were. The home button is covered with a piece of black tape. A latching connector pops up to release the ribbon. There is also a piece of black foam gluing the ribbon to the frame. This is to ensure that the home button rips and Touch ID is disabled when inexperienced people try to pull it up after disconnecting it. Thanks, Apple. Cleaning the frame is super important. All the old adhesive and pieces of glass need to be scraped away to leave a flat surface for the new digitizer to fit into. Even a stray chip of glass can put pressure on the new panel and shatter it during installation. Ask me how I know. The adhesive on the home button bracket needs to be carefully scraped away as well. Children are notorious for pressing the button excessively hard and breaking the adhesive internally, causing the button to become stuck inside. Children keep me in business for this reason. Some 3M tape primer is applied to any surface that adhesive will go onto. In the case of the home button bracket, there will be a layer of tape between it and the glass. Two drops of primer on the glass itself will cement that home button in place and hopefully prevent return repairs. I'll align the ribbon under the protective plastic, but just out of view from the front of the panel. It's important not to touch the glass under the protective layer with bare hands or even gloves, as it smudges and it's not easy to clean. Now I'll get everything reconnected, but not fully assembled in order to test functionality. Usually these replacements are great and have no issues, but sometimes you'll get a bad one that touches things on its own or doesn't respond at all. Turning it back off this way feels kind of magic. Now it's time for reassembly. Three short screws secure the shield in place. The longer small screw goes in the battery, and the larger four go to the LCD. Finally, it's time to peel off the protective strips from the pre-installed adhesive, and remove the ever so satisfying protective film from the inner layer of glass. panel is pressed firmly into the frame to make for a near factory finish. The outer protector is removed, but this one was unsatisfyingly silent. And that's the end of that. Thanks for watching my video. Let me know what you thought down in the comments and be sure to subscribe for more repair guides coming your way. See you next time.